Hey, what's up guys? Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles. Welcome back to another Sonic Academy video. Today we're going to be talking about computer specs and hardware, specifically for a Windows build. So it's recently become time for me to upgrade my studio setup. It's getting a little bit old and I wanted to get some fresh hardware into the machine so I can run more in my projects. And in light of that, we decided to actually shoot an entire video series at Sonic Academy looking at the entire build. Uh, right from a sort of buyer's guide uh, all the way through to doing the build itself and then doing a Windows installation as well as optimizations as well as a couple of other handy tips and tricks. Now we opted to go for a Windows 11 installation. I know it is a very new OS this, but I do believe that this is where everybody's going to be heading at some point. Uh, I've been using it for quite a while now as well. I do a lot of beta testing uh, for various different software companies and running Windows 11 made a lot of sense. And I'm really enjoying the experience up until now. As you may know, there were some issues with AMD hardware, which has now been patched as well. So it is pretty safe to go ahead and install a Windows 11 system for audio production. So we're just going to talk about some of the specs that I opted to go for in this build. I know there's going to be a couple of comments right off the bat. Why didn't you get a M1 Max? So we talk about this a little bit in the series as well. Um, what it really boils down to for me is the software. I've been on Windows for a little while now. I used to be on Mac for quite some time and I switched a little while back. I really enjoy the Windows experience. I don't see the massive difference between the two uh, and this suits me best. Uh, but I also did some research and some digging as far as benchmarks are concerned on the two chips. And we talk about this in detail, uh, but what it came down to is that you have to realize that uh, the M1 chips as good as what they are, they are still mobile chips at the moment. And when it comes down to multi-core performance, the best chip and the sweet spot for me, as far as bang for your buck is concerned, I didn't want to just go and buy the uh, most powerful processor on paper. I don't think it makes much sense. And in some cases, it's actually detrimental to the performance. Uh, but what we settled on was a Ryzen 5900X. Of course, there is the 5950 as well, um, but the price ratio, the 5900 for me was the sweet spot featuring 12 performance cores, 24 threads, it absolutely shreds when it comes down to big projects in a DAW. We ran some benchmarks on this as well, following the Cubase benchmark from Scan Pro and Dom Segalis over at Steinberg. Uh, we managed to get pretty similar results to their tests. They were using a Ryzen 5950X uh, and my system after benchmarking hit 100 tracks of a Retrolog instance with a multiband compressor and a Revelation reverb on it, uh, playing 10 notes of polyphony before it came to a halt and wouldn't play anymore. So that totals 100 compressors, 100 reverbs, five channels of audio, and a whopping 1,000 notes of polyphony from the VST instruments. For the rest of the build, we opted to go for a Tai Chi B550 motherboard. Uh, I didn't go for the X570 because of the passive cooling on the B550. It's less noisy and I wasn't too concerned with having additional PCI Gen 4 slots as you get on the X570 boards. I did however pick up a Sabrent Rocket PCI Gen 4 one terabyte NVMe SSD for my system drive to pair alongside my two terabyte uh, M.2 drive, which is my project drive that was also installed on this board. We then also grabbed 32 gigs of G-Skills Trident Z 3200 megahertz RAM. I didn't really feel the need to go faster than that because the 3200 is what the processor is rated for. You can go higher, but the gains you get are not that great. 32 gigs was the sweet spot for me. Um, I've never really needed more than 32 gigs for any of my largest projects. The only time that I feel that you should be doing more than that really is when you are doing large templates for orchestral work. And even then, you can get quite a large amount of samples loaded into the 32 gigs regardless. The rest of the build, I was using the uh, Metallic Gear Fantex case that I had before that was just brought over from the upgrade as well as the AIO. 
uh, which is a fractal S24 liquid cooler. Also paired that up with this fractal 650 watt gold power supply. And then I managed to get my hands, luckily enough, on a RTX 3060, which is completely irrelevant for audio, but I do do a fair amount of fairly GPU intensive video editing. So that was a nice bonus to add to the machine. So anyways, if you've never built your own audio PC, go check out the full series. It's a ton of fun. It can be very, very cost effective when compared to buying a new MacBook every time that you need an upgrade if you are so inclined to install Windows on your machine. We do do a fairly comprehensive uh, look at the component selection, why you should look at certain processes, what they are best at doing, uh, as well as all the other components. We'll run through all of those, the benefits and what you should be looking for, what you should be spending and so on. We'll also run through the setup of Windows 11, looking at things in the BIOS, like enabling the AMD FTP TPM module so that you can install Windows 11 and a couple of tips and tricks to maintaining your system. Obviously a few things have changed in Windows 11. So the old guide of optimizing your system is not exactly the same. So we run through that as well. Anyways, if you guys are interested, go check that out at Sonic Academy. I hope you guys enjoy the series and I shall see you soon right here at Sonic Academy. Cheers. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video, then smash a like. And if you want to be notified about new videos, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace!